Hello and welcome back to our organic chemistry series. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing aromatic compounds. Let's get right into it. So before we get into the actual chemistry of benzene and other aromatic compounds, I just want to give you a little light history lesson. So aromatic hydrocarbons, the simplest of them, come from two main sources, coal and petroleum. Coal requires an enormous amount of heat to break down into coal tar, which then can yield benzene-like rings. Petroleum, on the other hand, contains very few aromatic compounds and consists largely of alkanes. Through refining, aromatic molecules can be formed with a catalyst at around 500 degrees Celsius. So what makes something aromatic, you may say? An aromatic compound requires four different things all must be met, the first being cyclic. This means the first carbon in the chain must be bonded to the last carbon in the chain. The second thing that makes something aromatic is sp2 hybridized. This means the molecule must exhibit planar geometry. The third factor that makes something aromatic is that this molecule must be conjugated. When I think of conjugation, I think of it in the, in the terms of Greek or fraternities, pi sigma pi, and it can go on as long as the chain may be. It must be alternating pi and sigma bonds. And we know that with conjugated compounds, this is a video we'll get into later, conjugated compounds are extremely stable, meaning they are less reactive than other molecules. We'll get into the benzene chemistry. Benzene is the pinnacle of aromatic compounds when we speak of them, especially as pre-med students. Benzene is going to be the ring that's used the most. Conjugated systems are extremely stable, therefore less reactive. Conjugated I remember as pi sigma pi, alternating single and double bonds. Then lastly, we have Huckel's rule, 4n plus 2. What this tells us is the amount of pi electrons the organic molecule must contain to be aromatic. All four of these conditions must be met for an aromatic compound. So n is simply an integer value. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. You will see increments from 2 to 6 to 10, to 14, and so on. These molecules will be aromatic if all the other conditions are met, the three previous ones. This is just an extra, you may say, check mark. So we'll use benzene, for example. If we plug in the integer one, four times one plus two, we get six pi electrons. This is how many pi electrons benzene contains. So this formula may be a little confusing to some people. The n, it's no significant reference to anything. It's just a simple integer value. So all it says is, if you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it doesn't matter. That's just the integer value. An aromatic system can comprise 2, 6, 10, 14, etc. pi electrons. It's no, the n is no significant value at all, other than it's just going to say, if your system contains 2 pi electrons and all the other three, the other three check marks are met, you're looking at an aromatic molecule. So this is one depiction of a benzene ring. These red and blue ovals just signify resonance. And so when we're looking at a benzene ring, in reality, we're looking at the hybrid, not the resonance structures. Andrew talked about this in the resonance video. If we look at the ring, there is serious electron density in the center. So when you look at this, the red pictures electron density, blue means it's gonna be the lightest electron density. You'll see these depictions quite often in organic chemistry textbooks, and it's just nice to know what they mean. So before we get into naming, I'd like to just touch on a few points that are very vital in organic chemistry aromatic compound nomenclature. And so let's look at this. X is a reference point. It could be a halide, it could be anything. All this is saying is that this is the one position. Now, ortho. These are all nomenclature references, so ortho would be a one, two position. So if we have an X, say a methyl, and then at the two position, we have a bromine. We would say it is ortho, bromine, etc. So X is in our one position. Meta would be a one, three. Now these only apply to di-substituted aromatic compounds. In particular, benzene. This is what will be most commonly used in our textbooks. One, four signifies para. Each of these can be abbreviated O, M, or P, and these are vital when naming aromatic compounds. Each of these abbreviations, O, M, and P, 
signifying ortho, meta, and para, are only used with di-substituted aromatic compounds. Now, before we get into nomenclature, there are some serious systematic names that should be memorized in organic chemistry. These are used very often, and they honestly simplify your naming. The no when, you when it comes to nomenclature, if you memorize these, it may simplify your names in regards to di-substituted or tri-substituted or tetra-substituted. These just simplify your names just a little bit. So if we're looking at a benzene ring with a methyl group attached, it's toluene. If we're looking at a, meth a benzene, excuse me, with an alcohol attached, it's known as a phenol. If we're looking at a benzene ring with an amine attached, it's known as an aniline. If we're looking at a benzene ring with a methyl ketone attached, it's known as an acetophenone. If we're looking at a benzene ring with an aldehyde attached, meaning a carbonyl with a hydrogen, it's benzyl aldehyde. With a carboxylic acid attached, benzoic acid, orthoxylene, dimethyl benzene. All right, so now the fun stuff, nomenclature practice. Let's hop into a bunch of examples, run through how to use the ortho meta para naming system, as well as the systematic names. This is one of the most simplistic names you'll, you will receive in organic chemistry, bromobenzene. This group hasn't been discussed yet in one of our videos. I'm not sure if it's been discussed in your professor's lectures, but this is a nitro group. So when naming, it's just nitro. So in this case, it'd be nitrobenzene. All right, so one more simple one. This is a three carbon alkyl group. Propyl is the name it receives. So propyl benzene. All right, so refer back to that systematic naming chart. We have a methyl attached to a benzene ring. This is toluene. So when referring to these systematic names, toluene, phenol, aniline, whenever that group is present, it receives the first carbon, carbon one. So we number it from here. One, two, three, four. Now name it. Because this is a one, four relationship, this is a para molecule. So therefore, it receives, you can either put P or para. I'll put para just for right now. For learning sake, para, para bromo toluene. All right, so we see another systematic name here, if you recognize it. The alcohol group attached to benzene. This is a phenol or phenyl, however you may pronounce it. But we cannot give this a ortho, meta, or para suffix because it is tri-substituted. That only applies to di-substituted benzene rings. And so we still number from the alcohol. One, two, three, four, five. So dichloro, because there's two chlorine substituents. Two, five, dichloro, Phenol. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Identify the substituents, number the chain. So this is another systematic name here. We have a benzyl aldehyde, and we have a chlorine in the para position, meaning 1,4. So when you can signify para, meta, ortho, the numbers are pretty irrelevant. So when classifying something as ortho, meta, or para, the numbers out front are useless because those suffixes denote the positions of the atoms in the molecule. All right, so we have a parachlorine to the benzaldehyde. So parachlorobenzaldehyde. So let's name this molecule. We notice the methyl, so therefore this is a toluene, trinitro. If you can pick out this molecule before I name it, I'm very impressed. An interesting fact about this molecule, two, four, six, Two, four, six, tri, tri, nitro, toluene, also known as TNT. So a quick fact, pop culture, ACDC in their TNT song states TNT dynamite. They are not the same thing. Dynamite is nitroglycerin. TNT is 246 trinitro toluene. All right, so one more example before I let you guys go. Alcohol attached to a benzene, therefore this is a phenol. Nitro, methyl. So one, two, three, four. So this receives the name 4-methyl, make sure alphabetical order, 4-methyl, 2-nitro, 4-methyl, 2-nitro, phenol. So if you found this video helpful, smash the like button, 
but this is not the end of aromatic compound chemistry. We will get into some benzene chemistry, some pretty heavy duty stuff in a later video. But yeah, if you enjoyed, stick around, subscribe, have a nice day.